the battery is the one of the most important sources of energy because it converts um, electrical energy to sorry converts chemical energy to electrical energy it supplies this energy to the vehicle the battery is very important because it is the power source of the vehicle it's that although the alternator continually charge the battery and supplies put the current to the vehicle but the, without a battery you can't start the vehicle using your key the battery is what helps to crank the vehicle that's its primary purpose and it also have enough power um, to supply the starter motor and a good battery have enough power to supply the electrical components of the vehicle for a reasonable amount of time even without running the engine of the vehicle so a good battery should have enough power to do that we are not um, being able to power the vehicle and not get drained in a short while so most times the battery you can use it even without your engine running to power it off appliances in the vehicle like your audio players the doors the sensors the electric sitter the dashboard the electric doors electric um, seat adjuster and many other electronic components in the vehicle are being powered by the battery a lot a lot have been powered by the battery even without the vehicle is running and if you're testing your fuse bus while your vehicle is done you're going to see a lot of um, fuses without i mean without even owning your start uh, running the engine just turn on your ignition you're going to see a lot of the fuses are going to receive power that shows that the battery is supplying a, um, current to a lot of the units and even some attractors even with that the engine running or the alternator charging it so the battery is very necessary and it's very good for the vehicle so having a good battery is priority because without having a good battery or a or a good charging system a lot of the uh, a lot of device will not function well they will not function at the optimal because they are not receiving the right footage they ought to receive so when they don't have the right voltage they require they won't function well so having a good battery a strong battery is very important batteries uh that have low back, um, voltage would or uh, low voltage would not be able to crank your vehicles and many other devices would not or many other electronic components and um, system or circuits in the vehicle would not run effectively with low battery so you have to have good battery and even with low battery you may get wrong um values or wrong diagnosis when you diagnose it. you have to have your battery well charge and which is being supported by the alternator so the battery and the alternator work hand in hand they can cause similar um fault issue and cases although as long as you have a battery you can start your vehicle uh and continually um, run the engine which in turn powers the alternator and generates a uh, power to charge the battery and also supply to every other part of the the vehicle so you're removing the battery firstly when you are removing the battery the negative terminal should first be removed um, the negative terminal must first be removed then the positive terminal so that the negative terminal does not um, so that there should not be a bridge in the circuit this bridge can burn it off use destroy some ECUs or some modus control modus or um, control unit in the vehicle electrical control unit or electronic uh, control model then while replacing it first 
you place the positive terminal of the battery then you after place the terminal then you put the negative terminal. why do we do this because the negative terminal of the battery is the body of the battery i told you that the body of the battery serves as ground so if the negative terminal touch any part of the battery there is no spark there is no tear problem. but if this positive terminal touch any part of the battery why the negative sorry if the negative terminal of the battery touched any part of the body of the vehicle there is no spark there is no bridging connection even while the positive terminal is connected because the negative terminal is grounded to the body of the vehicle but if the the positive terminal touches any body of the vehicle of the vehicle which is a ground while the negative terminal is still connected to the battery there will be a spark and this can destroy fuse so some electronic component and even your ECU or ECM as the case may be so the battery voltage should be in good condition the charging should be working and um, even in diagnosis one of the first thing you have to check is your battery voltage now majority of the battery are lead acid batteries and uh, depending on the acid density that shows are well the battery are fit here yeah. battery usually die down over time and they should be replaced or recharged when they are low or reservice sometimes some people we service battery but if you can get a good replacement battery um there are more modern batteries that have been improved you can get them and use them they will be of huge benefit now there are batteries varieties of batteries it could be a 12 voltage battery or a 24 voltage battery with different ampage like 25 amps 10 amps sorry 100 amp 50 amps, sorry 75 amp 100 amps um, we have different rating 150 amps all these depends on the vehicle capacity and the electric um, system in the vehicle to determine the number of ampage that the battery would need why the voltage usually for cars the voltage is a 12 volt voltage that's what they use why for trucks 24 voltage that's what the batteries are the type of battery to use then we'll look at the ignition system the ignition system is the system responsible for igniting air with fuel for combustion to take place and ignition talks about um, generating spark to the spark plug and they have different type of ignition system and like i told us earlier the different generation of vehicles different generation of ignition system so we're not going to be reaching all three generations of vehicles and ignition system but we are going to just um, look at some of the thoughts that can come with an ignition system we have misfiring when the ignition system is not working as it ought to it's not igniting at the right order and the right time this is um not this because um may damage our engine because slow um rpm or power or slow rampage um we're talking about slow movement or less energy from the vehicle irregular combustion it could cause um, knocking of the engine and it's dangerous it's not good it's not safe for a vehicle it's not the right nature of vehicle should be so when the vehicle misfires the vehicle continues to run but there are irregular vibrations and unstable rpm and unwanted noise the noise is, could be dangerous so um, cranking the engine um, it starts from the motor the starter motor we know the starter motor or uh, the kick starter the uh, the kick starter solenoid 
uh, others this happen their gears which receive energy from the battery when you um, crank the key you know once the key is able to receive signal and correspond with what the vehicle immobilizer is program with it sends the, the information open the, uh, the crank that is um, sends power to the starter motor and that which has been geared and connected to the flyway turns the flyway and it rotates the vehicle and the engine starts and um, the combustion starts in the engine the flyway wheel is an heavy metal component that's used to store mechanical torque to enable continuous running of the engine after every cycle of combustion so um, power from the kickstarter goes to the power from the battery goes to the kickstarter um, at same simultaneously power also goes through the ignition system where the fire pump pumps in fire and the engine begin to run that's the simple working principle of the engine the camshaft the opening and the closing of the camshafts because um that is the camshaft the the intake and the exhaust valves which is controlled by timing and this timing usually used to be timing chains and all that but now it, a lot of electronic uh, um, controls are been integrated into all this timing and this combustion is what leads to our engine to rotate and our engine works well. So the foil system is also another um, aspect. So the foil system has foil pumps and these foil pumps are the foil tank. They generate powers and this um, power increase the pressure or they generate there are treaters in the foil pump and these are treaters or slow noid um, pump the foil with increased pressure through the foil hoses and lines through foil fitters and a lot of stuff and at put it through either your foil injector or carburetor nowadays we have moisture injectors and these foil pump are electrically powered and electrically controlled electronically controlled so they also use electrical powers and even the cooling system the cooling system is responsible for maintaining the engine temperature for regulating it within um, a workable limit they are responsible for regulating the engine and we know the cooling is true air cooling and this cooling is done by um a radiator fan blow air through the radiator and through conversion um through conversion the heat is exhausted is all is the heat is transferred to the environment and it's cooled so the fan and even what we call the um cooling fan um, sensor or temperature cooling temperature sensor that senses when the engine is hot and the fan begins to work and start the cooling process all these are electrically controlled and um, some of the thoughts we can have is 40 fan fan not working where um, a temperature cooling a temperature sensor could be bad 40 water pump we also have the water pump the water pump also pumps the water you add pressure and all these are now electrically controlled and that sensor on them now we'll look at the some other important components the exhaust system the exhaust system is regulated with um, the exhaust system after all the energy has been generated the heat and um, will be exhaust the exhaust gas would have to leave the system and a lot would leave so 
the the exhaust system has a lot of components that regulate um uh, it tells us to check the level of oxygen that or the level of carbon monoxide or pollutant as the case may be that in the exhaust system to regulate the amount of fuel and oxygen supplies in the intake manifold so and this is being controlled by the auto sensor and by the oxygen sensor in the exhaust system and several other sensors some call it the lambent sensor whatever it has a lot of complex system and dpf a lot of more um that's for diesel particulate filter all these sub sensors and um, they are also they usually generate electrical fault all these are the electrical fault in the exhaust system